Have you ever noticed that with every season of Nananbiori, the first character you see is always Renge? It's true, it's almost as if the creators knew that a hearty Nyanpasu was the best hook the show could have, and the best way to establish a good first impression. Because, as we all know, Renge is a treasure. But you know, I would go even further and say that Renge is a large part of why Nananbiori works as a show. Nay, more than that, and I'm being completely serious here, Renge might even answer what to do about the meaning of life. And to explain what I mean, I first have to explain what Nyanpasu means. Which I can't do. Because it means nothing. It's translated as good meowning, which is cute, but it sounds nothing like ohayo gozaimasu, which is what good morning actually is in Japanese. When asked what does Yanpasu mean in an interview, producer Oshi Yushinuma of Nanan laughed and basically said, it's just a greeting dreamed up by a first grader that can fit a variety of situations. In a lot of ways, for someone so young, Renge is almost too clever and grown up. What does Yoshinuma mean here? If you've watched the show, you know instantly, but it's kind of hard to put into words. In a lot of ways, Renge often says or does things that seem random or don't have any particular meaning. One moment she's declaring a cocklebur her mortal enemy, while offering it as a harmless gift the next. Or relentlessly defending the secrecy of her drawing the only way she knows how. Or having the bright idea of helping Hikane weather the cold by soliciting comebacks through absurdist improv. Wait, let's pause on that word absurdist, because I think that helps us understand the paradox of Renge. Someone who is obviously a child, and yet offers so much human insight. Albert Camus was a philosopher. Well, he wouldn't want you calling him that, but he certainly was philosophical. Regardless, he coined the term absurdism. To oversimplify, absurdism belongs next to existentialism and nihilism. It's a way of looking at life. And aptly, it says that life is absurd. Humans are hardwired to search for meaning, but according to Camus, that meaning doesn't exist and can never exist in spite of religion or science or whatever. That is the central conflict of absurdism, grappling with a question you desperately want the answer to, but that of which has none. So what do we do if life has no meaning? Do we just end it? Fortunately, Camus has an answer, and it's the approach that the other lovable characters of Nanan -Nan take towards their little philosopher Renchan, and that is to embrace the absurd. Camus says in the face of this evidence, we should accept the reality of life, but persist in the face of it anyway. He references the Greek myth of Sisyphus, the cast-out king whose punishment involves eternally rolling a boulder up a mountain, almost reaching the top only for it to roll back down and start the process over again. Camus says, we must imagine Sisyphus happy. Now that sounds, well, absurd, haha, <laughs> but this is when we return to Miyauchi Renge Dono. I don't think it's an accident that she's a child, precisely because that places her in the position to reinvigorate something we may have long lost. And that is wonder. I mean, just look at her discovering things for the first time. Whether it be nurturing her first tomato plant, setting up her first crab enclosure, or simply holding a cell phone. Now, part of the wonder of that last scenario might be the fact that she thinks with it she can accomplish her wish of having all whales fly, but that's the beauty of Renge. Unabashed curiosity and joy. It makes us long for the days when life was a novel adventure. For most of us, the countryside has the air of boring nothingness, but to Renge? It's a massive playground. Natsukashi is the Japanese word for nostalgia, but the translation isn't perfect since it's often used as an exclamation, like, Natsukashi ne? In addition to the fact that you wouldn't just randomly say nostalgia when you were feeling it, nostalgia also has a bit of a melancholy connotation to it. Historically, it was actually looked down upon to be nostalgic, since it implied that you would rather live in the past than the present, and that being impossible was sad. You might even say absurd. Natsukashi, on the other hand, derived from the verb natsuku, which means to keep close and become fond of. Instead of a sadness for that which no longer exists, I think it's more useful to think of natsukashi as an acknowledgement or reminder. Remember the past, nay, honor it, for it was beautiful. Psychologists today say that nostalgia is an incredibly good thing to experience. 
It gives us a sense of continuity and purpose, as well as a sense of community with our fellow humans. Nanan Biori makes a lot of people want to exclaim Natsukashi, which I think is interesting because not everyone grew up in the Japanese countryside. Part of this, I feel, is because a lot of childhood is universal. We sympathize with Agashia when she has to babysit Renge, but ends up falling for her adorableness. We remember when our responsibilities consisted of playing outdoor games with neighborhood friends. And a lot of us are familiar with kid logic, which can be absurd, but weirdly profound. Take for example Renge and Shiori's conversation in episode 7 of Nonstop. When Renge says she wasn't ready for this high-level conversation, we intuitively understand. Think of the endless questions Shiori's statement of, I'm taking this ball out for a walk, generates. Why do you take things for walks? Can inanimate objects be pets? What is a pet? Is a ball an adequate replacement for a pet? Even though she's treating it as a pet, is it still a ball? Which makes kicking it okay? Later, while they're playing, Shiori makes an interesting observation, but along with that, an even more interesting comparison. She questions why the ball ever stops rolling, on the cusp of figuring out friction. But what prompts this question is the fact that she herself finds that she can't stay still when people tell her to, relating her own human experience with a plastic ball. Rather than just a forced setup for the eventual pun, Shiori's intriguing comparison tracks with what we know about the minds of children. It turns out that children are incredibly good learners, and that's due to some inherent advantages they have over adults. For one, their prefrontal cortexes aren't as developed, which may seem like a disadvantage considering the PFC controls executive function. But free from the restrictions of prior knowledge and pesky logic, children are incredibly open-minded and crush adults when identifying causal relationships. Children have the power of lateral thinking, of connecting things that seem irrelevant at first blush, and the open-mindedness to not throw out things that don't immediately make sense. Renge demonstrates this when she accepts Shiori telling her that she ate friction at face value, admitting that she might need to revisit the concept. I think the closing paragraph of the study hits quite well. It says, Adults may sometimes be better at the tried and true, while children are more likely to discover the weird and wonderful. This may be because as we get older, we both know more and explore less. Weird and wonderful, in my view, are the perfect descriptors for both Renge and Nananbiori as a whole. In that way, her knack for creating beautiful drawings quite tickles me. Nostalgia is a massive theme of Nanners, and what captures nostalgia more than literally seizing a moment in the past, tucking it away to reminisce with later. And on the other hand, it's absolutely absurd that a 6 or 7 year old can draw with such accuracy and skill. But you know what Camus says about absurdity? Embrace it. Yan basu! Thanks for watching! If you liked the video, please click the like button. It's the best way to support the channel and tells YouTube that this is a video worth watching. Subscribe to the channel to know when I upload in the future. Also, there's a good amount of great reading material in the references section this time, so be sure to check out the description below. If you want to support me further, you can donate to my Patreon. Special thanks to Mandible Burst, George Sauter, Teddy Meterfield, Yolomore, The Anime Buck, Jimmy Fallon BG, Kate Gamer 632 and Sir Tom for their support. And of course, if anything I said was wrong, I'm sorry. I must have stuttered. <laughs>